Hi there, Alistair Ross here from the Ultimate Linux Newbie Guide. Check out our website if you haven't been there already. It's www.linuxnewbieguide.org. It's been around since 2001 and is the number one internet guide for learning everything about Linux. www.linuxnewbieguide.org. Okay, so today, this tutorial, we're going to be showing you about elementary OS. It's, yes, another version of Linux. It's um, aimed at people who have either come from a Macintosh operating system, so the Mac OS, as it's called now, or Mac OS X. Um, and it looks very familiar if you're a Mac user, but also it looks familiar enough if you're a Windows user. It's based on aesthetics. It's a really, really nice looking operating system. And I guess a lot of the new users to Linux will really appreciate this. So this is the website, uh, elementary.io. And uh, if we can scroll down, you can see uh, some of the features that are in their, um, their operating system there that are quite specific to elementary. So for example, down here, um, you can see apps you need once that you don't. And it's got customized mail app. It's got its own sort of lightweight web browser called Epiphany, and it's also got some really nice, uh, tidy uh, tools around as well, which are, will still feel similar if you're running um, GNOME. It is based on GNOME 3, but they've been uh, skinned up and look nicer uh, for, um, for this particular distribution of Linux. Okay, it also has um, uh, an open source app store, which is slightly different, again, to the usual GNOME one. All right, um, so if you scroll down just a little bit from the, the front of the page, you'll see you can pay what you want. So they're actually asking their users to download um, and pay for it, pay for the software, which is, if you're used to downloading Linux distributions, that's pretty uh, unusual. So you can pay $5 or $10 or 25 and you can also pay what you want. So in this case, obviously, this is a demonstration, so you can actually enter $0. You don't have to pay for this at all. Um, so that's what I'll do. Okay, now that you've downloaded the ISO image, you should see it in your downloads folder. Uh, if you haven't ever installed Linux onto your computer before, then you should head over to our website, www.linuxnewbieguide.org. It tells you how to set up your hard drive to partition it into slices so that you can put Linux and Windows on the computer at the same time. And it also tells you there how to unpack the ISO file and put it on a USB stick or even a DVD. Once you've done that, pop the USB stick or the DVD into your computer and then restart your computer. Once you've done that, hopefully it should come up and start up. I'll show you that part next. Okay, well if your USB stick or your DVD drive has done what it's supposed to, then you'll see this screen, uh, Try Elementary Without Installing or Install Elementary OS. Now if that's not what you've seen and it's gone back into Windows, then it's probably because your computer doesn't know to start up from the USB stick or the DVD. That's no problem, it's probably straightforward to tell it not to start up from the hard disk. Uh, so head on over to the linuxnewbieguide.org and um, from there on chapter 5, we've got a little bit of information on how you can tell your setup or your BIOS to start from the USB stick. Hopefully you're seeing this though, and there's two options here that uh, are worth, worthy of note. Try elementary OS without installing, or install elementary OS. So if you're just letting the defaults go, it will go to try elementary without installing. Um, Absolutely fine to do that, but for brevity's sake, we're going to do install elementary OS today. So pressing the down cursor key here and then hitting in, uh, return will get us to that point now. Okay, so the installer now has started up and took about a minute. Um, and it obviously varies on how fast your computer is. So hopefully you're seeing the same thing here as myself. Choose the language um, of your um, particular like uh, from the left hand side obviously it's already defaulted for me to English fantastic uh, press continue um, I'd recommend that you do both things here so as long as your computer still got an internet connection of some description this is the best part to do it um, you can click on download updates and install third party so what those things mean is one, the top one there, download updates whilst installing elementary, just basically means that you will get the very latest software when it, uh, when it installs. All the security updates and patches since the initial release 
will be installed for you whilst you're installing the whole operating system. Second option there, install third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, hardware, Flash, MP3, and other media. The reason why it makes you tick this option is simply because the, um, the, the software is non-free, as in it's non-open source, still free of charge though. Uh, and, th and this just basically means that you get all of the drivers that you might need for your computer, your specific computer type. So I, I'd recommend that you tick both of those boxes. Press continue. Now the next option, hopefully you've gone over chapter uh, 4 and 5 of the Ultimate Linux Newbie Guide. If you haven't right now, then I'd probably suggest that you do that. This part is about partitioning your disk. Um, it's the same process for Ubuntu as is uh, Linux Mint, as with most uh, Linux installers these days. you got a few options here, but very briefly, um, rather than going to the website, you can erase the disk and install elementary. Now, you want to choose that if you want to just blow everything away and not put a, a dual boot, would be called. So a dual boot meaning that you could have Windows and Linux uh, able to start up from your computer at the same time. If you choose this top option here, it's going to completely delete everything on your computer and just give you elementary OS. So that's probably not what you want if you're just starting out with Linux. Um, there's another encryption option. You can do LVM with the new elementary installation. And also, it should pick up here, if you already run Windows on your computer, it'll say, choose to install alongside Windows. So in this case, I don't have Windows on this computer, but if you did, then you would tick that option. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, install because I don't have anything on disks, so I'm just gonna press continue there. And it's blowing away my disk. The next stop is to find out where in the world you are and hopefully it's picked you up already. As you can see, I'm in Auckland, so I'll press continue. If you're in some other country, then you just click on the area of the world that you're in. I also I should point out right now, if your Wi-Fi isn't set up and working, then you can plug in an Ethernet cable if you have that ability on your computer. That will help with the downloads uh, later on when it's doing the install. So if you don't have an internet connection, but you do have an ethernet cable that you can plug in instead of the Wi-Fi, then I'd recommend that you do that right now. Okay, next up, keyboard layout. Choose from the layouts on the left-hand side. So I've got an English US keyboard, and the layout is also English US. Now you may have a Macintosh, so therefore you could choose English Macintosh, slightly different layout on the Mac keyboards, for example. Or you might be in the UK and have a pound sign on your keyboard. Um, and so you would choose that. All right, press continue. And then you just simply put in your details here. So this will um, make it personalized to you. So I'll put in my name here. And you can give the computer a name of any particular type. So in this case, I'll put, call it Elementary OS. Okay, pick a username. Alistair will do. Uh, password, really strong password, password. Okay, a couple of options there. You can log in automatically or you can require a password to log in. That is the default, and I do suggest that you stick with that one. You can encrypt your home folder, um, which means if somebody steals your laptop or whatever, they can't get the data which is on your laptop's home folder. All your standard files will be stored in the home folder. It's quite a good option, but remember, if you forget the password for that encryption, then you may be in trouble. So um, it's up to you entirely whether you want to click on that or not. Press continue now. And the installation will now begin. All right, hopefully everything's installed right now. So once that's done, you'll see this dialog. Installation is complete. You'll need to restart the computer in order to use this new installation. Press restart now, and uh, you'll see your computer restart. If you're seeing this screen now, congratulations, you've just installed elementary OS on your computer and everything looks pretty good. So I'll just pop my password in there, really strong password, password. Try not to use that password. 
and let's log in for the very first time. This is your new Linux desktop. Looks pretty Spartan, but uh, it's soon quite quickly, easily to, to get where you want to go. So Epiphany is the web browser that comes with the operating system, and you'll see it's pretty um, bare bones. It's uh, you know it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple looking. Um, it doesn't have all the features that you would find with Google Chrome, for example. Um, but um, let's just see how it works. Um, you'll find for general browsing it's absolutely fine, but do be aware that it hasn't got all of the features that Google Chrome has or, or Firefox for that matter. Don't worry, if you do want to use Firefox or Chrome, you can download them. You just, uh, if you want to Chrome, like it says there, you can go to the website and download it. Uh, also, if you want uh, Firefox, you can install it through the uh, software um, packaging system, which is just down here, App Center, they call it. So let's click on that now, and I'll just close down this web browser. Okay, so it, this has been pretty much redesigned um, for elementary OS. You can see it's a um, pretty nice, uh, well-developed, sort of quite mature-looking system. Um, if you know the name of the software that you want to install, you can just type it in here, Firefox in this particular case. And you can see there the third one down, Firefox web browser. It's as simple as that to get the software that you want. Just press OK. It will prompt you for your password, which was the same one that I had earlier on. Downloads it and then off it goes. You've got the, uh, the package installed in a number of moments. To see all of the software which is on your system, you click Applications from up the top here, and you can see them in a sort of, um, I guess, carousel kind of view. Uh, just there, you can see there's very few options, uh, very few pieces of software that come with it by default. Um, and you can also go in a sort of category view down here on the right. You can um, swap between them, so accessories, graphics, it, it sort of sorts everything out for you. Pretty intuitive, I would think especially if you've used the Macintosh computer before, this kind of dock at the bottom feels really familiar. Again, email, it's a specific uh, program which is totally um, written for, from the ground up for this um, elementary OS. So you can use Gmail, you can use Yahoo, Outlook, or any other IMAP or POP3 email system straight off the bat with this is quite nice. It's a nice little easy to use interface. So you can give that a go. Um, again, with the calendar, it's all custom written. I think this one is probably a little take on the GNOME 3 one. It's probably used a lot of the same code base, but it is, uh, again, specific to elementary OS. So they've really done an awful lot of work on this um, software. Uh, the music software, um, it's, uh, it's pretty similar to, I think it's called Banshee, um, and the video player um, is, the, is basically the GNOME video player. So, um, as you can see, some really nice looking applications. Um, you'll, you'll get familiar, get them easily, um, and you can sort of tie in all those sort of things. System settings, again, it's the standard GNOME 3 sort of system setting dialogue. Uh, you can set up networking from in here. You can set up your displays, your backgrounds, all that sort of stuff. It's really nice and clean, and the icons are like, um, like you would expect on a Macintosh computer running Mac OS. Um, so just to show you that the software has installed, you get this multitasking view as well. Again, really like Macintosh. You can see the two windows side by side there, and you can also see a little like, icon showing you there's two of these uh, two of these windows. Right, and just clicking on the desktop there, I can bring it back to uh, how it was. So just to um, launch Firefox now, I can go up here, and it'll be an in internet. There it is. Icons changed for some reason. Starting up Firefox, here we go. Awesome, just like that. Um, so yeah, if we go back to that um, sort of carousel or the dock, I guess, we can click on the, um, the multitasking view again. And you can see now that the two icons have changed down here. And you can see a side-by-side -side view, very like a Macintosh. You can also hit this plus button here, and it gives you a secondary workspace. You can actually have as many workspaces as you want. So say you want your calendar here, um, you can have that there and then quickly swap back to your first desk work, workspace and there you go, you've got your first application back. So it's really kind of handy for that sort of stuff. 
Really well done. I really like this operating system. It's really a nice uh, polished system. It uh, has a, had a lot of work on it, and I guess that's probably why they're asking for donations uh, for, for when you download the software. Um, again, heavily influenced by the Mac OS, but if you're a Mac user, you're going to love this. Um, if you're a Windows user and you've always liked the look of Macs, then again, this is great. It's all the Mac without any of the money. This has been uh, Alistair Ross here for the Ultimate Linux Newbie Guide. I do hope you have enjoyed the video. If you can, subscribe to me on Ultimate Linux Newbie Guide and make sure you check out our page, hit us up and give us some comments, let us know how we're doing. Thank you very much for watching.